We continue to follow the crisis in Afghanistan. A day after those explosions outside Kabul airport killed 13 service members, President Biden yesterday, and we showed it to you live, vowed revenge. But this tragedy has created a firestorm of anger with many people wondering how might this have been prevented in the first place? And joining us this afternoon, Bradley Bowman with the D.C.-based Foundation for De Defense Democracies. Uh, Brad, good to have you with us. You recently wrote, Afghan war critics blame Mr. Biden for the chaos, but instead you think they need to look in the mirror a little bit. Tell me what you're talking about here. What, this is not a, a partisan thing. This is something that everybody, I think, shares some, some uh, blame for. Well, thanks for the uh, the question, the opportunity to join you and to really discuss this this horrific development that we're we're seeing in Afghanistan. Uh, if I may, just you know, I feel uh, compelled just to say that, like so many, like all Americans, we're thinking of the victims, uh, the service members that mm -hmm. made the ultimate sacrifice for our country, uh, and we think of their families and we think of the many Afghans that were killed and injured as well. And, uh, you know, I think it's important to remember what happened here. We had Afghans, innocent Afghans, men, women, and children fleeing the Taliban, trying to get to safety. And you had Marines and soldiers literally wading into the crowd. I mean, just incredible personal bravery, if you've seen some of the footage. Yes. Literally trying to help these people get to safety. And in that moment of vulnerability, as innocent families were fleeing for their lives and brave service members were trying to help them, that's when ISIS Corazon came and, uh, and detonated this apparently suicide vest. And so that's, that's what happened here. And I, I think it really reminds us about the evil, I, I don't think that word's too old fashioned, the evil character uh, of our enemies. And, uh, and we need to kind of stop the self delusion and be clear about who we confront. These are enemies of all civilization. Uh, let's put a little historical perspective on this if we can now. Maybe we shouldn't be surprised uh, about what happened, that this was on sort of a, pre a predictable trajectory, I guess. Uh, Joe Biden has been a long time uh, a proponent of getting, of disengagement uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, he came into office uh, after having campaigned on that. Uh, there was something you wrote about, though, that, that, that struck me. Uh, the Secretary of Defense and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff tried sort of one more time in his office to say, um, we shouldn't do this precipitously. We have to make some sort of a longer plan. But the President wasn't having any of it. Right, right. You know, the, uh, yeah, the focus has got to be getting Americans out of the country right now and helping in, in, in you know, we have this looming self-imposed August 31 deadline coming up. And obviously the attacks, the horrible attacks yesterday changed really everything, whether we like it or not. But once we get Americans out and many of our, as many of our Afghan special immigrant visa partners out, mm -hmm. it's perfectly appropriate to begin to ask, how did we get to this point? And, you know, I've been writing for a long time. You know, I've been thinking a longer, but writing at least since 2019, kind of begging, almost pleading our country not to do what we've now done. And I, I think the kind of um, distasteful dynamic maybe that we're seeing right now among many politicians of both the right and left, including former President Trump, is that you know Biden essentially more or less is doing uh, what they called on him to do, uh, and and the result is highly predictable. The result is a Taliban Al Qaeda syndicate ruling in Kabul uh, with a safe haven, with uh, women's and girls' rights in danger and refugee flows. That that all was going to happen if you did a timeline-based conditions ignoring withdrawal. Of course, Biden's implementation made it worse. But people who've been spouting this endless war narrative over and over again, parodied it at, at town halls for cheap talking and cheap applause, you know, the, the president did exactly what they asked for. And now they're going to want to focus on the implementation rather than the policy. And the policy, in my opinion, is the primary reason we are at this point. And, and, and so that, that's not a gotcha thing. It's not yes. a politics thing. The, the, it's too serious. It's too horrible. It's too grave. But we have to be honest. And, and, and it's not a backwards looking thing. Because if you buy the endless war narrative, the next logical conclusion is, oh, we should do the same thing in Iraq and Syria. So, you know, it's important that we finally see our enemies clearly, in my view, and learn the right lessons. Because, in fact, the, the enemies are about to take over this country and threaten destabilization in other places. And, and we are engaged in other places as well. It's the moving forward thing. Uh, this issue doesn't go away just because we aren't on the ground anymore. We have to confront it now from uh, over the horizon. 
Right, and I'm so glad you said that because you know I, I, I uh, you know I, I believe President Biden is a, a good man and a patriotic man, but he's just a mistaken man right now on these issues, and and he should have learned better. He should know better. He was the leading advocate for the 2011 withdrawal from Iraq, which of course helped contribute to the rise of the ISIS caliphate, forcing us to return in 2014 at a higher cost. He's repeating basically that exact same playbook now, and as you said. He was, he's been warned by our intelligence community repeatedly. He was warned by the chairman of the Joint Chiefs and the Secretary of Defense repeatedly. I mean, Secretary Austin, who at the time oversaw the withdrawal from Iraq in 2011, reportedly said to President Biden in April before he made the, the, or, or, before he made the decision on April 14th, Mr. President, quote, we've seen this movie before. Mm. But on April 14th, President Biden brushed aside those warnings and proceeded. And you know, he cites, well, I had to do it because of that Trump administration deal. I mean, the Trump deal with the Taliban was horrible. We could talk about that, and Trump owns that. Yes. But let's be clear: Taliban never abided by the agreement. We were in a two-party agreement, and the other party never complied. So why would we feel compelled to honor agreement that the other party didn't comply with? Who would do that in a mortgage or in a personal contract? Why are we doing that as a as a great power and as a nation? So here we are. Um, you know, the bottom line is we're going to be less uh, going to have less knowledge about the terror threat in the Afghanistan, Pakistan region, where about 20 designated terrorist organizations still reside, and many still want to kill us. We're going to be less agile and effective in responding, and we're also going to have a terrorist recruitment and radicalization bonanza. He says, "Oh, you know, look at Al Shabaab, look at AQAP, look at all these terrorist groups. Every every one of those groups he cites that he's apparently more concerned about, all of them are feeling emboldened today." Because now they can say, hey, our brothers in arms, they defeated the Soviet Union, and now they defeated the United States. This is a mess, sadly, that we're going to be cleaning up for years. Uh, and it was something, so much of it was predictable and uh, self imposed. Again, the graveyard of empires. And there's word today, too, that apparently uh, the head of the Haqqani network has now been placed in a very high position, uh, uh, perhaps, if you will, sort of the secretary of defense for the Taliban. So that is a, a worrisome thing right there. Uh, Bradley Bowman, uh, we always turn to him for some uh, really valuable perspective on the events that have been going on. Uh, thanks again for your time, Brad. Thank you, sir. Thank you.